The best way to create interest in macrobiotics is to have the food that's made here for this weekend to be spread around all over the world, and everybody would become macrobiotic. <laughs> very, very simple, very, very great way to do it. So thank you very much for everybody that's putting all the food here together. It's been great. And during the um, break here, I was talking to Mika for a minute, and she used a key word here about using the word professional, about different people, professional in different aspects of macrobiotics. And one of the things that we have to look upon ourselves at, are we professional in spreading macrobiotics? And truly speaking, the answer is probably no for almost, almost all of us, myself included. And probably one of the biggest faults that we have is that we're trying to spread macrobiotics in every aspect. We, we're not, we don't have to be everything in macrobiotics. If we're good at teaching, we should be the teacher. If we're good at spreading macrobiotics, if you have somebody in your organization that's good at publicity, let that person do it. One of the problems that we've had in macrobiotics over the years is that our, we've always looked at the people who are the teachers or the senior teachers that we think they're good at everything. And unfortunately, I, Micho, dear Micho was the, the single best example of that, is that Micho did try to do everything himself. And for us to create macrobiotics and spread it, we have to really count on other people around us and surround ourselves with really, really good people and let go, let go of the, of, of the, the reins, so to speak and let people that are good at what they do. I've been very fortunate that I surround myself with these young people that are really great on the internet. And they send me stuff all the time and I just trust them. I have to trust them. I have to let go and trust them. And I think the best advice I can give to everybody is trust the people around you. There's got to be somebody in all of your centers that is good at this. And you have to be able to trust them. And if we're going to grow, we have to trust these people and let these people connect with other people. One of the things we've learned to do is to align ourselves with other organizations, other affiliates, so to speak. And it's incredible how they come out of the woodwork. If you put out there, you have some kind of message to say, people want to align with you. They want to say, hey, I want to what are you doing, what are you doing, and stuff like that. And what we can do, and I only speak from <clears throat> the experience, obviously, most of our programs really don't cost us money to put on. It's most of it is education we're teaching. So to have somebody come for free and listen to your talk, what does it cost you? It costs you to spend, unless you're totally sold out and standing room only, and you have to turn somebody away, but most of the time that's not really the case. So what you could do is allow people, reach out to people and say, if you, they have an organization, maybe they have like, a, maybe a, <clears throat> a thousand people, 2,000, 50,000 people on their mailing list, let them reach out to their mailing list and, and you offer them to come to your program for free. And we try to do that as much as possible. And you do that many, many times. Because we, we, you know, we've, I, we've had examples of people that we never even knew existed. And people wanted to reach out to us. And they say, we want to find out what you're doing. And all of a sudden, they are, this one woman is an example. We, we never heard of the woman. She reached out to us. She lived in Israel. And she had 50 people to come to one of our programs. Because she had followers. And we let her come to our program for free. So you should try to align with other people. I call it the affiliate program, whatever it is. Reach out, they're out there. You just have to have, and, and if you can't do it, as I said, I keep emphasizing it, reach out to people in your centers that can do that for you. And this day and age with the internet, it's incredible what's going on now. You just put out different words and different things, and. I mean, you'll hear about this in the next couple of days, Dan, I know from last year, but it's incredible what could happen now. There's a whole other world that's going out there, certainly way over my head. I'm happy to say it's great over my head. Let them do it, and I let them run with it. So we, if we want to grow, we have to let other people run with their message and let them do it. 
Another thing that we, uh, we found very successful is there's organizations out there that do the same way, to offer free space in your you know, overflowing seminars that you have, is we offer, um, they do like organizations, there's a lot of nonprofit foundations all over, I don't know how it's called in Europe, but there's definitely organizations that doing similar work that you were doing in whether ecology or animal rights, etc. So we, they do like auction, have like fundraising auctions themselves. So that we'll say to them, okay, our program costs say a thousand euros. I'm just making up a number. 500, 500 euros would be more realistic. 500 euros. And we'll say to them, they want to have an auction. It's a fundraising where people are going there and they're willing to advertise your program, give it to them maybe 450 or on anything they collect after that, they get to keep. So you want to get your base money paid for. Say you want to get 400 euro for your program, and they then raffle off or they have an auction, and they get five or 600 euro, 700, and that organization keeps the extra couple of hundred euro because people are there at this fundraising dinner and everybody's into bidding and everything like that, and they're going to give you the publicity for it. So. Try to align yourselves with different organizations like that. We, we, we get letters all the time. People want to do that because they want to be able to offer it. And we only we pick and choose with organizations that have a bigger reach. I mean, yeah, you can have a lot of organizations that want to come and, and do that with you, but they might only have like a thousand people that are coming on their mailing list. So you try to get as many people as you can with organizations with, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, whatever it is, the sky's the limit. Try to align. The other thing that we've found very, very, in, in, just in case you haven't noticed, I'm being a little sarcastic on this, but this, the f fastest growing food movement happens to be vegan. It's far, far surpassing anything else, not necessarily in numbers, but in the publicity out there. And you know, you, if you ask people what st statistics, and they say, oh, ve vegetarian is way higher. But you don't hear vegetarian so much anymore, but you hear vegan all the time now. And we're, we're, we're missing the boat, so to speak, if we don't align ourselves with a lot of those organizations, a lot of people. And a lot of them are really, there are, yes, I call it the sentimental vegans that are only into it for the animal rights, but there's a whole bunch of uh, the, uh, of the vegans that are into it because of the health reasons. So try to align yourself with this health, the health-oriented vegans. And they are also the same way. They, they're going to come to you. And you know, we do different programs and they say to us, well, this, this food isn't vegan, it's macrobiotic. And I look at them like, hello, <laughs> what, what, are we, what are you talking about? It's really, they, you know, so they, there are some people that are looking for the spices and this, you know, the other thing that, necessarily isn't traditional macrobiotic stuff. But what we do in our programs, every day, regardless of what they say, vegan, not vegan, every morning, if we do a program, a week program, 10 days, we have miso soup for breakfast every morning. So we're introducing people all the time to, to macrobiotics. I call it, we want to get them in the door. Whatever it takes to get them in the door, like to put out that wide net, to capture the net. Once you have them, then it's up to you how to, keep them, how to keep them there, but at least get them in the door. So we're not getting them in the door. We're here today, you know, we, we're here 50 people, we're saying this is great. We should be 5,000 people meeting in a big auditorium someplace. This is silly what we're here for 50 people here. I mean, it's great that we're here and year after year, but we should be filling up auditoriums. As I said yesterday, Macrobox is the best kept secret going. So why, what, what are we doing that we're not doing right? that we have to be able to spread that out there. So we really have to put our egos aside and let's get other people to help us and, and go for it because we really have a great message. And the teachers, as I repeat again, the teachers that teach, that's what their job is, to teach, and they're great at it. And everybody has a spot. Everybody is a spot for everybody in this whole world. You know, you're not, it can't be everything to everybody all the time. So let the people who teach Put them up there on the pedestal. Let them teach. Let them do their thing. And the people that are good at doing even exercises, that's, that's as important as anything else. You want to have everything. It's like a whole, we want to make it a well-rounded 
well, well-rounded. Macrobiotics is really, it's a way of life. It's not a diet. We say that, I don't have to have me tell you that. But we should be focusing on that way of life thing that we want to have everybody realize. We're, we're it to everybody. We're the ecology, we're the fun, we're the music, we're the dancing, we're the education. We're everything, but we're not putting that out there. We're putting it out there as a diet. And we have to be out there for more than just a diet. So um, encouraging everybody to take, find the young people in your organization, because that's who it's at. The older people don't know from the internet, sorry, older people, maybe some of you do. But you gotta really count on the younger people and let them, let them go with it. And, let, and really, let them run with it and let them do their thing and, and see what it, where it's at. And really, really go for it and really embrace the vegan communities. This, and be a speaker. Get, put yourself into these, into these there's, always, or, there's always fairs going on, organiza- there's always stuff going on there. Anybody calls me up anytime, I say yes to anything. They want me to go on a talk, they want to fly me to Seattle. I was, at a, I was on a radio interview show in Seattle one time, and a couple of years ago. And during the commercial of the radio show, they were talking about what was going on with the health issues in the United States. And I said to the, the interview guy, I says, you want me to take, if you want, forget about the stuff that I was talking about, I could tell you about the health issues that we were talking about, and how we could help the country with health issues, and what's, that wasn't even a topic we were talking about. But in macrobiotics, we have so many things to offer. We just have to have the opportunity that, to do it. So really, really, you know, some of us are very quiet and conservative. We're not the people who go out there and pushy. Get the pushy people. Get the pushy people to do it. You gotta just, there are pushy, pushy people out there. They, they, and they wanna be heard. They wanna be heard. They wanna do their thing. They have these things. And I have, you know, I have five kids. And my son tells me all the time, it's Dad, you don't understand. You're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. You should do this and this and this. And you gotta listen to some of these young people. They know what they're doing. And we have to put aside what we think we've been doing. <coughs> It's great, yes, we're here, we're great macrobiotics, we know it's a great thing, but we want to go more than what we're doing here. We want to go and whatever, whatever we can do, whatever way we can capture them to get them in the door. Get them in the door is the key. Once they get them in the door, people come to our programs and they say, um, they didn't know what macrobiotic food was. They had no idea. They, they come because of the title of the programs that we do. And as I said, they, but they're eating the food every day. So we say to people, we do a survey before the program. What's, what's the diet? How many people are vegan? How many people are standard American diet? How many people are macrobiotic? How many of this? And if we do a survey at the end of the program, it changes how many people now macrobiotic or now have interest in macrobiotics because we're putting out, so just to get them in the door. So your job, my job, our job is to get people in the door to find out about what we have to offer. So whatever it takes, whatever it takes, go reach out to the people that you have in your community and really reach out to the vegan community out there. And as macrobiotics as a, as a lifestyle, we should embrace veganism a little bit more also because that's really what's, what's heading anyway. The way things are going out in the world anyway with the oceans and the food and everything else, it's really the, 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 what's the next big thing is, is, is the vegan diet. It's a really, it's really what's capturing. I know, Bill, I think your new book, right? Isn't that, that's what it's about. And I think that's gonna get, create the interest. And whether we use the word macrobiotics, you know, in their face, like throw it in their face or, you know, around the corner and sneak it in through the back door, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The idea is to do it. So try to reach out to, um, the vegan kind of thing. It's okay, you want to eat on your own. You know, you know a couple of times we've had d- different people come, come over to me and you know, I, ha- I have to be vegan myself, so it's easy for me to say to people, okay, I'm, you know, I've been, I'm vegan and whatever it is. What about macrobox? As, as everybody has their own choice to do whatever they want. That's always our answer, right? Everybody can, you're your own boss, you, do, you eat whatever you want. But when you're out there teaching these days, I suggest to help create the spread of macrobiotics, don't emphasize talking about fish and meat or chicken. I mean, not talking about meat and fish, but forget the fish part right now. The, the times are now to talk about vegan diet. 
and you'll resonate much more with the population than younger people, if you want younger people to be part of your organizations, or if you want younger people to come to your lectures. I mean, we talk about, that's the future, right? Isn't that where it's at? The future is the young people, to get them into involved in it. And if we don't do that, then shame on us that we're not doing it. We're not doing our jobs as smart as we think we are. We're not so smart. So let's try to you know, be smart and reach out to everybody. And you can ring the bell, whatever it is. I'm done. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> <laughs>